Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to uh, solve some free quiz questions and from our API 510 pressure vessel inspector full course. Um, you, this is free for all, uh, so you can try it here. This is uh, 60 hours credit hours CPD accredited, continuing professional development, 8 hours of video, 208 lectures, 1300 questions, and 3500 flashcards, 120 days, 24 7 course access with online support through our WhatsApp or email. You can contact us and pass first time or free renewal. Okay, let's go to our free quiz and see um, some of the questions. You can share this post and uh, you can try your knowledge. I've already solved the question, so we quickly go through that. Uh, number one, which of the following types of discontinuities is not normally detected by radiography? Uh, so the correct answer is lamination. The reason is that radiography works of volumes. So practically the X-rays or gamma rays pass through the metal and uh, some of them get observed by the base metal. Uh, now you have, uh, if you have a porosity or a slag, um, so the, that area where you have defects, the, the, the material is not dense. For example, in porosity is just a bubble or a slag is just a well deposit. So the density is far less than the actual base metal. So more uh, X-rays or gamma rays pass through that. So as a result, you see uh, a lighter uh, version of that brightness on the radiographs. The only um, Exception would be gas tungsten arc welding, where uh, you have got tungsten inclusion of the electro tip, uh, and tungsten is a very, very dense material, denser than any, uh, practically any other base metal, uh, and hence see them as uh, darker. Uh, so normally you see uh, anything brighter than the surrounding area, that's a defect or an indication you can see. Now, in case of lamination, uh, there is not much space between two parts which are not fused during the uh, pipe manufacturing or plate manufacturing. And hence, uh, it's very hard to see the lamination in radiography. And the best uh, entity technique would be uh, UT. Okay. Um, obviously, MT, PT, and RT. Sorry, and VT also you cannot see because uh, the, uh, the lamination is always inside through the thickness, inside the vessel, uh, the, the plate. Next question. API 510 shall not be used as a substitute for original construction of pressure vessel uh, before its place in service. It's always used, uh, can, it's applicable when the vessel is placed in service. Uh, for construction code, uh, you should see what is applicable. It could be a semi-section 8 uh, normally, or it could be the European equivalent of uh, Pressure Equipment Directive PED, which is PD 5500, or the local jurisdictional rules. Uh, but uh, 510 only applies once the vessel is in service, okay? So we got this, uh, if you haven't answered it, it will ask you to answer it. And we have got this uh, percentage of the progress. All of our questions are timed. The quizzes are not timed, but just take your time. Um, so compared to ASTM 515 grade 60, the 516 grade 60 plates have better uh, tensile strength. So the A stands for ferrous metal. The 60 means 60,000 PSI is the strength. Here you see everything is same except this is 515 and this is 516. So that 16 is about a finer grain structure. So it's got better fracture toughness. So remember, if it's a coarse grain, uh, the fracture toughness is less. A finer grain, you've got more ductility and more fracture toughness. Who establishes inspection interval? Uh, normally it's done by inspector, 
uh, anyway it should be approved by inspector because eventually inspector is going to certify that the vessel is fit for purpose and by inspector we mean uh, an api authorized pressure vessel inspector who has uh, passed the exam uh, now the ultimate responsibility of maintenance operation and safety of the vessel lies with the owner so eventually it's the owner user or the inspector on behalf of the of the owner user as as my section 5 division 1 is based on safety factor so previously it was four uh, with better production and quality control um, it's been uh, 3.5 presently the safety factor uh, if you want to do division 2 then it's four uh, but for division 1 is 3.5 uh, most of the vessels are made according to division 1 division 2 is more onerous um, question six identify incorrect statements so here uh, you be careful that um, there are three uh, statements which are correct so you're looking for one uh, which is not correct so read the question carefully so the answer one is building performance uh, performing procedure test is also qualifying that position that means a welder who does the uh, a test coupon to qualify a WPS uh, in preparation for PQR. Uh, obviously, if it passes, then uh, in that position that he has welded, uh, he is also qualified the welder. This the ASMA Section 9 allows this. Now, supplementary essential variables become essential variables when impact test is specified. That's also correct. Um, and answer three says for procedure qualification test should be performed in any position as the position is not essential variable for WPS or for procedure qualification. That is correct. I mean, there are some exceptions, uh, but you do, don't need to know about this because you are not being asked to go that much detail uh, into welding engineering as a API uh, 510 inspector. So we can assume safely that yes, uh, welding position is not an essential variable normally for WPS. Uh, and the last answer, which is uh, uh, incorrect, is WPS and WPQ have the same qualification requirements. That's incorrect because uh, the reason for WPS to qualify it is to uh, demonstrate that the weld that has been designed is actually can have the required strength. Yeah. Okay. Whereas for welder uh, performance qualification, you want to see that actually the welder can uh, deposit a sound weld. Okay, so uh, the qualification requirements are different for the PQR for WPS is an, uh, an strength test, whereas for WPQ it can be a radiographic uh, uh, RT uh, radiography or it could be a bend test. So to see that the uh, welder can actually deposit a sound belt. So because the purpose is different, so the qualification is different. Next question. Uh, API, uh, sorry, A516 grade 70, the letter A is ferrous metal. Now, if uh, you want to know more, then ASTM general classification A is for ferrous, B for non-ferrous, and rest for others. But mostly, we you can see that you always deal with material with A, ASTM A, which is for ferrous metal. Uh, if you want to know more, you can uh, yeah, put the explanation here. Uh, but this is not required for the exam. Symbol uh, which indicates ASME code stamping for vessel manufactured to ASME Section 8 Division 1 is U stamp. So U1 is the form that the manufacturer fills in uh, for the vessel. Um, and U2 is for the part manufacturer. We have no U3 and it's always U stamp. What will be the applicable mandatory edition uh, if a vessel is manufactured 
and was signed on off on 14 December 2011. Now, uh, once a mandatory edition is published, uh, normally on January, there is six months uh, grace period where it can be applied. So maximum six months. So if it is done December 2011, and you could look at this edition, so 2011 edition will apply because it's done in January and the December is like 11 months here. Okay. The term E used in shell thickness represents belt joint efficiency whose value is equal to one. Now, when it will become equal to one, it depends on the percentage of radiography. Now, longitudinal wells are uh, under more stress. They are like double the stress than uh, than the circumferential belt. And uh, so they are always more onerous on any standard you can see. So if language in well should be fully radiographed, but circumferential belt need to be spot radiographed in order to have an efficiency of one. Next question. Uh, a restoration work. So repair is always a restoration work. Uh, re we don't have anything as renewal work. And alteration means a change in integrity operating window or in change in design or whatever. So um, uh, that's called alteration. Re-rating is an outcome of alteration, which means an increase or a decrease in any integrity operating window parameters. Uh, so repair is always a re restoration. In certain empty check, uh, you found an indication, and uh, by visual observation, you found out that it's uh, uh, it was seen as four millimeter. Okay, and the acceptance criteria is uh, say three millimeter. Uh, now you did a magnifying glass. You did more uh, with closer scrutiny. You found out actually is two and a half millimeter. It's not four. Uh, should, should you accept it or reject it? Now, look, uh, if you change your uh, uh, visual from a naked eye to a magnifying glass, or you should change your measurements, so this is an essential parameter first in, uh, in uh, uh, MT procedure or any ND procedure. Uh, so uh, you have to go by the procedure. If it says uh, naked eye and... Uh, uh, you have uh, measured it to be four millimeter, then it's rejectable. Now, if you've done a magnifying glass and you found out, yeah, it's below the acceptance criteria, the maximum, then uh, you cannot accept it because uh, you cannot change the essential parameter, okay? Uh, unless you requalify and have work to another procedure. So you should always work by the book. As my code records averaging of impact test, so this is straight away three. Uh, you go to any code B31.3, ASMA section eight, uh, or API 510, uh, it always says that the uh, set of impact tests should have uh, three specimens. Okay, sharp test specimens for toughness. Stainless steel weld has a crack on this open to the surface. Uh, so if it's open to the surface, the most sensitive one is actually liquid penetrant. And now UT, probably you might not get it because UT cannot, uh, uh, is not very good on detecting uh, defects close to the surface or to the or on the surface, okay, open to the surface. Whereas um, radiography, I mean, it's more expensive and uh, uh, anyway, liquid penetrant is more accurate on this case uh, compared to magnetic particle. The magnetic particle does uh, surface defects or open very close to the surface, okay? But liquid penetrant only does uh, uh, defects that are open to the surface, uh, that's it. But then it's also very sensitive and very uh, uh, more effective to do that. PQR document normally be revised and resubmitted for acceptance. This is false. Uh, PQR is uh, uh, contains um, the actual parameters that you use during uh, qualification on the test coupon, the voltage, amperage, heat input, uh, preheat, uh, uh, 
uh, and the type of electrode used, the position used, and all this. But uh, uh, so so and the and the tensile test uh, or any Sharpie test you have done. So it's actually a record of facts. So you cannot revise it. Uh, there might be a minor uh, typo error that you want to revise it. Uh, that's okay, but that's it. Uh, you cannot uh, revise a PQR. Uh, but you can re always revise a, a WPS, but only the non-essential parameters. If you want to revise a WPS with essential parameters, um, you have to requalify to WPS, so that you, need, you need a fresh PQR. For PQR, essential, non-essential parameters, that's actually what happened. And it's a, a table of facts and figures and uh, records and uh, uh, test reports. So you cannot revise it. Uh, hot tapping. So you should know what hot tapping is. There might be several answers here that you can see. Hot tapping is when you want to drill a hole and then, you know, a connection while the vessel is in service. Uh, is uh, un under pressure. Okay. And uh, so that's called hot tapping. Uh, which of the following represent grouping of weldment? Now he is asking about the weldment. So P number is for base metal, F number for filler metal. There is no S number. A number is for weldment, grouping of weldment, which is a combination of weld deposit and diluted with the base metal. Okay. An inspector should be strict while carrying on inspection on longitudinal joint. So always you can see that longitudinal joint is the deciding parameter when calculating the inspection interval and um, uh, the uh, uh, joint strength and the design calculations because you got the hoop stress test because uh, it's all if you look at the formulas uh, for uh, joint thickness uh, versus the pressure for longitudinal joint is almost twice of a circumferential joint. So, and you all can also see in ASMA section eight that uh, the acceptance criteria is more onerous for uh, longitudinal. So you should be more careful with longitudinal joints. Uh, PT examination is used to detect surfaces, uh, cracks in wells, as well as in base metal. For proper detection, we should allow higher penetration time of base metal or place than welds. So the reason is that the base metal is very smooth, uh, whereas the weld uh, invariably they got ripples and they are not as smooth as the base metal. So when you got ripples, the penetrant moves faster. When it is a very smooth surface, it takes more time for penetrant to go into that uh, voids and holes and any defects. Okay, so you need more time for the uh, give more time to penetrant to penetrate the base metal because it's more smoother compared to welds. And last question is weld joint category. When you're talking about category, it's always location of the belt. So it doesn't matter what sort of belt it is. Uh, is it the V joint, U joint, uh, single bolt, double bolt, bolt joint, uh, uh, full penetration, par partial penetration, that's a type of belt. Okay, so for the category means location of belt because, if, for example, for longitudinal joints, as we said, you've got more stress involved here, so you need more um, radiography, or you uh, you have to be more careful in design and uh, repair, and uh, so compared to circumferential or uh, nozzle to shell joints and all that. So the well joint category it always depends on. The location of the belt, where the belt is located. Thank you very much. You can also see all your uh, just type your email and you receive a copy of this in your email.